Greetings from Tucson. Raina Tucker here with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. The following is a pre-recorded presentation on the status of bighorn sheep in Arizona. If you have any questions following this presentation, please feel free to reach out to me at the information you see below. So I'm gonna start out with our most recent survey results. Due to COVID-19, we were not able to conduct aerial surveys in 2020. So the last full results we have are from 2019. In our desert bighorn sheep herds, we saw a ram to you ratio of 53 rams to 100 ewes and a lamb to you ratio of 36 lambs to 100 ewes. This is above the long-term average for lambs to use and just below average for rams to use. In our Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep populations, we saw a ram to you ratio of 52 to 100 ewes and a lamb to you ratio of 37 lambs to 100 ewes. This is above the long-term average for rams to use and just below the long-term average for lambs to use. As far as translocations go, in 2018, we moved 30 desert bighorn sheep from the Silver Bell Mountains to the Picacho Range in 37A. We were supposed to follow up with two additional translocations in 2019 and 2020, but we were unable to do either for the following reasons. In 2019, Precipitation events in the Mineral Mountains prior to the disease testing we had planned in anticipation of the October capture dispersed the sheep far and wide. The capture crews sent out for the disease testing only located around 30 bighorns. They captured 12 for disease testing, but the low numbers observed prompted us to do an out-of-cycle survey to confirm their absence from their usual range. This out-of-cycle survey only revealed 36 sheep. There were no signs of a die-off, and we suspected that the abundant water across the landscape had just caused them to spread out. Permit holders that winter participated in a citizen science project funded by the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society, which confirmed bighorns were out there, just not in a convenient place for capturing and translocating. So we postponed that capture for 2020. And unfortunately, as you know, 2020 was a bit of a dumpster fire. <laughs> COVID made it unsafe to bring enough people together to process captured sheep. So fortunately for us, the original 30 in the Picachos seem to be doing really well. We have eight working callers still on the landscape of the 10 originally released. Two of them died within the last six months or so, but otherwise, as far as we know, the adults are still alive and well. And when we were able to survey in early October of 2019, we saw a lot of very large, very healthy lambs. You'll see some of them pictured here. Those are young of the year. So they're doing really well up there. We were supposed to also translocate some Nelson's bighorns from unit 12B East to unit 15A, B and C in the Grand Wash Cliffs. But when we completed the disease testing there in 2019, we found that the two herds were incompatible. So that translocation has been canceled. Fortunately, we were able to continue with some of the translocation efforts that we began in 2018 with the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep. We moved 30 Rocky Mountain Bighorns from the Eagle Creek and Morency area, which is on the Eastern side of Arizona, just over the border from New Mexico. And uh, we moved them up to an area called East Clear Creek, which is approximately 150 miles northwest of Morency. Morency is a small town next to a really big mine, which comes into play because the year following, uh, we were able to add another 27 bighorns to the original 30 by using a drop net on the mine and also opportunistically darting animals that frequent the, the town of Morency and the neighboring town of Clifton. Uh, this new herd up in East Clare Creeps, Creek seems to be doing really well. We've only had a couple of mortalities to the collared sheep and have observed really good lamb recruitment so far. Now we actually began darting uh, some sheep opportunistically in the town of Morency as they become quite a road hazard there. And we used those, those sheep to supplement the Black River and South Fork herds in 27S. This area is approximately 70 miles north of Morency, And I mentioned this because two of the rams that were collared and transplanted or transplanted and then collared managed to make their way back to Morency on their own. And fortunately left us a really nice breadcrumb trail thanks to the collars they're wearing. So that's been kind of interesting to watch. This fall, if everything goes well, we're hoping to add another 40 bighorns to the Picacho range. Um, we're gonna try and find 20 out of the Mineral Mountains this year and 
take another 20 from the silver bells unless we need to add a couple extra if we can't find a full 20 from the Minor Mountains. We don't expect that will be a problem, but you never know <laughs> with sheep. Uh, we're also going to begin translocation efforts from the Trigo Mountains in 43B, which are in the southwestern part of the state, into the Harker Bar Mountains in 44A, which are just west of Phoenix. Depending on the results of a ground survey of the East Clear Creek herd this July, we may also capture some more Rocky Mountain sheep from the Marinci area and take them up there to join the others. The statewide bighorn management plan is, as always, under review for inclusion of new information on topics related to future management. So in the past, we've given an update on um, some herds of interest. Some of these have been included in past slides, and I just wanted to give you an update on these. In the Black Mountains in the northern part of the state, in units 15B West, 15C North, 15C South, and in 15D, we had a reduction in our population in 2015, 2016 due to some respiratory disease. As you can see, the population dropped quite a bit and um, prompted us to decrease the hunt permit tags in unit 15D. Um, the population does seem to be increasing in 2017. It was up to 200 and in October 2019, we saw 300 total. Um, but we have kept the numbers, the permit numbers about the same. There is still a little bit of concern for finding older age class rams, but hunters are harvesting rams averaging a score of 162. Um, some of the units they're finding having difficulty just locating the rams in general. So we did increase the hunt window from one month to two in 15B West and 15C. So in 2006, the bighorn sheep on the Kofa National Wildlife Refuge also experienced a population crash. It dropped from 650 to 405 over the course of three years. A management plan was put into place, and I'm happy to report today that as of 2019, the herd has finally returned to pre-crash levels, reaching the goal in the management plan of 800 plus bighorns. The population was estimated at over 900 bighorns in 2019. Yay, Kofa! The Catalina Bighorn reintroduction, which was a very high profile project due to its proximity to Tucson, also seems to be doing well. In 2019, we surveyed the highest number of bighorns observed in the range since the reintroduction began in 2013. While the overall numbers are not impressive at first glance, the no growing number of unmarked sheep that we see each year bodes well for the future. We also had a pretty good fire in this range in 2020. Uh, in June, lightning sparked a wildfire in the Push Ridge Mountain, uh, Push Ridge Bighorn Management Area, which is shown on that map in the blue outline. And that fire went on to burn over 120,000 acres. Much of the habitat in the management area did burn, which should benefit the bighorn sheep. Uh, most of what they typically use, which is kind of the purpley blotches in the uh, bottom left corner of that map, did not burn. So we don't believe we lost many bighorns, if any at all, on this fire. And we're hopeful that the sheep will more readily use the rocky faces on the north side of the management unit now that the shrub cover should be reduced. Other things, sheep. <laughs> As usual, the special tag license sales continue to bring much needed funding to the bighorn management program. This year, the Desert Bighorn Permit Tag brought in $315,000. The Rocky Mountain Tag has yet to be auctioned on May 1st. Uh, in sum, the program has brought in 12 million, just under $12 million, which really helps us with management of sheep in Arizona. Um, one of the things we're working on right now is research on habitat. Um, Andrew Jones and the research program did a study in 2013 to 2017, looking at um, mountain lion and bighorn sheep habitat and predation risk. This is in review with the Journal, Journal of Wildlife Management now for publication, so keep an eye out for that in the next year. They're also working on a habitat suitability model that will be applicable to southeastern Arizona, which has a slightly different vegetation component that makes using other habitat models difficult. We've also initiated or are continuing several habitat use, disease monitoring, and corridor studies. Dustin Darbo, our game specialist out of Region 6, talked to you last time about progress on an MRDGEA to capture bighorns on the Tonto National Forest. He 
was finally able to obtain permission to complete several capture efforts in January 2020 within Forest Service Wilderness in order to monitor for disease and track movements in response to fires. However, some special conditions came with that permission. He had to complete less than 30 landings in the wilderness areas in a one year period. Dustin was able to hold it to 21 across four wilderness areas, in all collaring 16 Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep and 13 desert bighorn sheep. We also have 17 collars deployed in or around the Yuma Proving Grounds. The goal here is to determine whether development and security fencing is obstructing movement between two neighboring mountain ranges. If it is, translocations may be initiated to ensure genetic flow continues. The Galero Firescape Project is something that was brought to you by Ron Day um, probably four years ago from the Nature Conservancy. This is a um, big burn plan that has gone into place in the southeast part of Arizona. I have a, I have a better update on the next slide for this. Um, so we'll go to that in just a second. Um, the last project I wanted to mention was collaring within the Morency area itself. I mentioned the city sheep that frequent the town of Morency and the mine, and we were interested in finding out whether they are connected to the surrounding uh, more rural <laughs> bighorn sheep herds, if you want to call them that. So uh, in 2020, we're able to dart some rams and use and put 10 collars out and see what they've been doing. We've seen some surprising movements from one of the ewes and also found that indeed the ewes and rams do travel between town and between the herds that exist outside of town. So back to the Galera fire escape. Um, the fire escapes are basically a plan that allow um, the forest service or other agencies to manage wildfire or light prescribed fires for a resource benefit. So fortunately, they had one of these in place in the Galeros when a wildfire was sparked in 2014, which you'll see that yellow blob there on the map. Um, and ever since then, they've been burning just about every year across these blocks through the mountain range, with the exception of 2020. It was too wet to burn last year, so they had to skip that turquoise blue block in the left part of that group, um, and they burned that this spring. Um, each block encompasses approximately 5,000 to 15,000 acres. The number of acres actually treated within those blocks varies depending on the terrain there and the conditions at the time of the burn. But in full, uh, from 2014 until now, they've been able to treat 60,000 acres in this mountain range, 7,500 of which was just burned this past February. Most of the burns have been completed via remote start, which is dropping incendiaries from a helicopter, which you see in that photograph there. Um, Ronde has some really fantastic video of these fires getting started that were taken through time lapse on a trail camera. And I wish I had a way to incorporate these into a recording, but I can't. So I hope he's able to bring those to the group next year or maybe can um, share them via email at some point or something. But they're really, it's really cool to see how this works. There's no um, ground cre crews necessary for this type of fire. It's really well managed from a distance. So um, this is a really efficient way of getting fire done in remote locations. And I'm really excited to see what the results are gonna be. Most of these burns have not been in occupied bighorn habitat as of yet, but the most recent burn is immediately adjacent to occupied habitat. And almost one month to the day after the fire, one of our uh, five collared rams in the area uh, went into the burn unit and has not left it since then. Ron's reported a nice green up there despite a general lack of moisture across the region as a whole. And we hope to see continued movement north so we can document connectivity between the two subherds that exist in this mountain range. In general, we're hoping that the data gathered from this project will help inform future prescribed fire where a benefit to bighorn sheep is desired. Last but, last but not least, I just wanna to touch on MOV real quick in Arizona. MOV has been present in the state for a while now, but we have some units where we had suspected it was present but hadn't confirmed it yet. This year, we were able to test 50 samples collected uh, from mortalities. We had five of those feral domestic sheep or goats. We had two of those or 43 hunter harvested sheep. MOV was detected in 15 of these 50 samples this year, confirming the presence in nine units shown in orange on the map. The blue units are places where we've either confirmed it in the past or suspected as 
currently present. So now it's time to jump to our hunt management in Arizona. We rotate our surveys through the sheep management units so that each unit is surveyed every three years. But we also gather observation information from trail cameras, hunters, the public in general, and uh, volunteers, which help us determine if an out-of-cycle survey might be necessary if anything's changed between um, aerial surveys, which might impact our hunt recommendations. When we have to write our hunt recommendations each year, we review the last helicopter survey data, harvest information, and any other information that may have come to light since the last survey. The number of permit tags allocated each, each year is based on the number of estimated class three and class four rams in the field. We target a harvest of between 15 to 25% of that group of rams. In 2020, we were able to offer 105 desert bighorn permits, including the special license permits. 100 rams were harvested, which is the highest number in harvest history. That number could have been even higher yet, but five hunters did not harvest, so we have a 95% hunt success this last year. As you can see, the number of permits we've been able to offer has been steadily increasing back to levels we supported in the 1990s. But even in the 90s, the highest ever harvested was 99, so we're doing really well. Our Rocky Mountain bighorn herds are doing quite well also, but there aren't as many available units with Rocky, so the number of permits offered is much lower than the deserts, but the demand for these permits is still high. In 2020, we were able to offer 17 permits, including the special tag, and of those 17 hunters, 16 of them harvested, representing a 94% overall hunt success. The one unharvested was the special tag holder who technically has a full year to hunt. So at the time the report was written, he just had not harvested yet. The overall combined average hunt success for deserts and Rockies over the past 10 years was 97%. The number of hunters has risen from 81 in 2005 to 122 in 2020. The green score of the harvested sheep has been steadily increasing over the past decade. The it currently averages in the lower 160s and the average age of the harvested rams is between six to eight. And this concludes my summary of the status of bighorn sheep in Arizona. With that, I will bid you all a good day and I encourage anyone with questions to reach out if there is time now or to email me or also Amber Munich, our big game program supervisor at your convenience. Thank you and have a nice day.